Okay, sorry for the delay. Welcome. Welcome to Business Information Technology. My name is uh, Alexander Schouten. This is Lucian. We will be teaching the course together. And Peter Sprong will also give two of the lectures, uh, but he is not here today. And this is a course about well, business information technology. Um, it's a course um, about the role of information technology in organizations. And um, often um, at the student evaluations, um, students ask or tell or um, complain. Um, from, well, this course was too little about IT, or this course was too much about information technology. Um, and, and you're right, um, because it's, it's a bit difficult to, to teach a course about business information technology to um, uh, everyone. Um, the whole point is that information technology is kind of, it's, it's everywhere. So it's, it's ubiquitous, so you don't even realize that you use IT like a, a lot of your time. So you, the, your whole telephone is information technology. Um, when you watch television, when you um, fill the, your dishwasher, uh, when you um, work together um, in groups using WhatsApp or Blackboard or whatever means possible, when you use your computer. So IT is basically everywhere. Um, but it generally works. Oftentimes uh, your word crashes and you have to uh, redo your work of the past 10 minutes. But most of the time you don't really realize the technology behind all the applications you use. And you shouldn't, because we are communication and information science students, and developing all the applications is part um, of computer science. So that's not the thing we do here. Um, what we do do here is study communication. So we study how people um, communicate within organizations. We study uh, marketing and online marketing. and. Um, for all of that, we need information technology, so it's all based on information technology. And this course is kind of the middle way between the hard technology and the soft skills you learn. Still a bit vague, but I'll explain more in a bit. Um, so first of all, information technology. So um, you often hear that information technology, especially in commercials, that information technology makes um, business processes and makes organizations more efficient, makes products more cheaper to develop, makes it easier to work together, so basically makes everything more efficient. And it does, because now you have your mobile phone, it's very easy to contact the people you like or the people you want to get into contact with. Um, so um, it kind of makes things easy. Then um, the question is, how can it be that so many IT projects fail? So especially in organizations. So there are a couple of examples here uh, that I gave here. So uh, let's take this one. Um, probably takes half an hour or so because it has to load the Internet Explorer. So, so it's one example of how not efficient IT can be. Um, not that there. So these are examples of uh, top 10 um, Corporate information technology fails. So all kind of big projects um, uh, implementing some kind of information technology system like an e-commerce store or a more efficient way of doing your finances in organizations. And they all failed. And um, if, if you look at this, so you see it's uh, um, the Snap-on Inc. Uh, company profits were experiencing 22%. Um, and after four years and 125 million in development, the project crumbled, well, etc. So the estimated costs of um, information technology failures are um, somewhere in the vicinity of three trillion dollars every year um, worldwide, and about uh, I think it was three billion dollars or six. I don't know. I don't remember in the Netherlands alone uh, last year. So information technology projects often fail. And there are a couple of examples, so California payroll system, so the, um, the state of California wanted to implement a system where um, um, you could well, pay your employees and uh, it would all be more efficient and it would all be automatically, and it failed uh, massively, so it cost them like $600 million and they still had nothing. Um, 
Uh, Avon, it's a, um, it's a company which makes beauty products, also trying to implement a new sales system, a new marketing system, which also failed, uh, costing 125 million. Um, we have our own, uh, in, it's a Dutch uh, Sociale Verzekeringsbank, which takes care of all the uh, um, uh, uh, benefits, social security, etc. Um, it recently came out that they had a new, that they had a project trying to integrate all the different benefits that people could receive into one system, so they could easily pay it out. It also failed. Our defense department um, recently uh, pulled the plug from uh, one of their most advanced systems, which should integrate the whole of the organization. Estimated costs almost one billion euros. So IT projects often, often fail, and they often fail massively. So it costs. Um, a huge amount of money. So there are a couple of reasons why IT projects fail, but um, as you may think, well, it fails because the technology sucks, because word crashes, or because um, um, the hardware uh, doesn't work. But if you look at the main causes of why those IT projects fail, it's, it's not technical at all. So in, in these are the most common classes of project failure, and basically only these bottom two risk failures and quality failures are failures in the information technology. All the other ones can be solved if you know how to communicate people with people, if you know a bit of information technology, a bit of doing business, and a whole lot of communication. Because all these organizing and planning failures, marketing strategy, um, creating engagement for the project, engagement in the team, um, good leadership, um, skills, uh, the learning uh, the skills to use the technology and, and uh, convincing people to use the technology are all soft skills, are all things that you actually need someone, some expert in communication in doing it. Um, so. This is basically what this course is about. It's, it's about the internal use of information technology in organizations, but not about the IT. It's about thinking about um, how you can um, make sure that these projects work. What um, communication aspects are related when thinking about information technology in an organization. Um, and that's why this course is, I think, relevant, of course. And it's still a bit, it's still a bit vague because you you all are uh, young at least, well, a bit younger than me, I think, and um, maybe you are not that experienced in working in an organization, and you may you may think, oh well, what's the fuss about? Because well, if I order a product online, it basically arrives within a day or so, so it all kind of works, um, and it does, but when you start thinking about what an organization has to do in order to make that possible, then you come up with a lot of things that involve some kind of information technology and involve thinking about organizations. Um, and that's what we'll be doing now. So, uh, of course, we, we, do have, uh, uh, we do have all uh, lots of practicalities of what this course is about, the lectures, the workgroup sessions, etc. We'll do that after the break. They're all in the course manual. They're not really interesting anyway, so they're important. But, um, so we might as well start by thinking about business information technology and uh, get you thinking about how important information technology and how important things will be that you learn in this course. So when you think about business information technology, the three things we will be dealing with in um, these lecture series are business, so what is an organization actually? What are the main goals of the organization? What components does an organization consist of? We will be talking a lot about information and communication. So um, how can you manage your organization efficiently? And what kind of information do you actually need to make sure that the product you ordered arrived the next day? Um, and we'll be talking a bit, not that much, but a bit about the actual technology. Um, but before we do, let's start with a kind of an exercise. Um, name an online store. Something. Wait. Sorry? 
The way gone. The way gone. Are there any uh, non-Dutch uh, students? Do you know what the way gone is? No. <laughs> Maybe an international company. <laughs> Sorry. Um, um, what is the equivalent of, uh, of the way gone internationally? Amazon. Amazon. Okay, let's take Amazon. It's a huge company, but it's doable. Um, so, thanks. Okay, Amazon. So we'll do the following assignment. So think about what happens if you order a product from Amazon. What will happen? Um, and think about the following five things. So when I order a product, what, what will happen in the organization? How will the product be sent to me? So what kind of uh, information technology is needed for that? Um, how does the organization uh, need to be structured in order to um, deliver my product the next day, or in case of Amazon, in six weeks or so. Um, <coughs> marketing. How, how does Amazon advertise? And more importantly, um, how, how do they know what to advertise? So think about Amazon or another company and think about um, how do they decide where to advertise? How do they decide if an advertisement uh, or its own ad on TV, for example, is worthwhile? What kind of information do they need to decide that? Think about the organization. How, how would Amazon be structured? What kind of departments would you have? What would the number of employees be? What would the revenue model be? What is the goal of the organization? And think about information technology. What, what systems would they have? What, what would they, they own? Um, do, do they have a database? Do they use mobile phones? How does their store work? I don't know. Maybe they. Maybe it's just a website with a hundred thousand people giving you personalized recommendations. I don't know. Um, and what for? What are the systems used for? So it's a kind of a, a large assignment. So I want to ask you to uh, uh, team up with with someone. So in groups of two. Um, so you will have to find someone else who is alone, um, and you as well. So figure it out, um, you're adults. Um, so it take 10 minutes, maybe a bit less. So take 10 minutes and think about all, um, think about all of these questions. And after 10 minutes, I will ask a number of you what you came up with. Good luck. <laughs> so okay. I hope you're all kind of done deliberating about uh, about possible answers to these questions. Um, one thing before we start, I forgot to mention the camera. So um, I, I did it last year in communication uh, with communication theory. Um, um, only then the sound quality was so poor that nobody, the, 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 nobody could actually hear me. So we hope it's better now. I have to do it for to get my teaching qualification. So, um, I'm, I'm still not allowed to teach you, well, no, I am just kidding, but I don't have the formal paper to, uh, um, to teach uh, yet, and that's what I'm, uh, I'm hoping to receive um, um, in a month or so, so that's why I need to tape, uh, to tape this. So, if you have a lousy lecture, it's because of my uh, inexperience, sorry about that. Um, okay, let's get back to the, uh, to the assignment. Um, so Amazon, Amazon is really a huge organization, so answers uh, may vary wildly. Um, but let's go to the first one. So what actually happens within the organization if you order um, a product? You can write stuff down. Is there a group who is inclined to... Uh... <laughs> Maybe first the, they use a system to divide all orders into categories because there are so many different sorts of products you can buy. Mm, yeah. Uh, but I have no idea how such a system is. Yeah, I'm, I'm not looking down because I think that's a terrible answer. I'm looking down to see if I can, uh, <laughs> if I, if I can shut off the projector for, uh, for a while. And I don't know. Screen. Um, okay, you order a product uh, on the website and you say, well, it's categorized into different products, for example. Computers, uh, I don't know, clothing, maybe. Let's say, 
clothing. Media, technology. Uh, well, uh, let's stick with three because uh, else I have to divide it all down. <laughs> okay, so I I don't know if this is true, but it could it, it could be. So 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 they 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 divide it into different groups. How? Anyone? Uh, each product has to have a street number, uh, so it can be easily divided into uh, groups and it's identified which color the product has, uh, which size the product has. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah so, a system of so you order a product, and the product needs to have some kind of ID number or maybe a whole range of numbers so that Amazon knows what kind of product it is. So let's say the ID number is uh, two. It's it probably has more than one number uh, with Amazon. Um, well, no, let's say it's 2057. <laughs> what? Because you can remember what product number two is. But can you remember what product number 2157 is? Probably not. So they need to have some kind of system that knows what kind of product it is. Um, so suppose they, they, uh, they, they have, you uh, play a so product order, the product has this ID number based on that number which is stored somewhere. Where, where would it be stored, that product number? Sorry? Barcode. Yeah, on a barcode. So that's, uh, that's uh, I, I think we we're getting a pretty complicated figure here. Um, so, so when you have the actual, uh, you order a product, but you also have the actual product, which is somewhere. Um, and that product probably has a barcode. And if everything works well, that barcode contains the same number as the identification number um, that you ordered the product with, so the barcode is not the only so it's not the only place where it can where the where the product number is stored. Let's say Amazon has um, 70 million products, and you've ordered product number 2157. Will what will happen? Will somebody actually walk to the warehouse and see one no two no three no four no? Um, until you reach 20, 2157, something else. Maybe there is like a real person in the warehouse, or maybe a robot. Yeah, it's, pr it's probably probably a robot who, who takes care of that. So probably there is, a, um, and the robot can be multiple things. So you you, pro you so you have an actual physical robot, and maybe I'll show a video next time of how this works. <coughs> so I I saw a. Um, um, a discovery program once about the IKEA warehouse, which is like if you have an IKEA, which is kind of huge, and then imagine it like ten times that, with, which stores all their inventory, and there's actually no one working in the IKEA, so it's only robots, and they they automatically pick and place uh, the packages on pallets, which are then automatically shipped to whatever IKEA um, they. Um, needs them. Um, so it's a robot. But it's not only a robot, there needs to be some kind of some kind of magical box here, which is called information technology, which knows the pro that the product number is a certain product and which then can communicate it to a robot which picks it from the warehouse. So um, okay. Um, but you said, oh, well, there are different departments. So what, what would that um, have for consequences for the way you order? So I don't know, if you, if you look at Amazon, there are indeed different departments. And oftentimes you see that a product is not actually sold by Amazon. So in the Netherlands you have Bol.com. And then oftentimes when you order something, you see that the order is actually processed or sold by a third company. That's what Amazon also does. So how would that work? It's a type of dropshipping and delivery. So the order is passed on to a third party, which executes the order and ships it to the consumer. Yeah. 
Yeah. So the order has actually passed on. So probably the product number has has like maybe one or a few numbers in it that that tells the system, oh, well, this product is not an Amazon original product. It's a product actually actually sold by some other organization, and then it just transfers the order to that other organization who takes then care who then takes care of the rest. So you see, we we already. This is actually very easy. So, so you order a book or a type of clothing, which is very easy for you. But, but then, if you start thinking about it, you actually get kind of already a very a complicated, a kind of a complicated system to understand um, for us. And then imagine that with Amazon, it's like it's like ten thousand times as as difficult because. Um, if a product is sold by another company, then you, you cannot just transfer the order to the other company. No, you need to keep track of it, so it needs to be stored somewhere, because Amazon would want to have a part of the profit, of course. So that's also something that needs to be stored, um, etc. So you see that it becomes increasingly difficult. Um, so I hope you now realize a bit that if you order something um, online, that it, that it sets in motion a whole range of things that the organization has to do. So it's not as simple as from, oh, I, an organization, uh, someone ordered something, uh, the order is sent to me via email, I'll pick it from my um, garage box and I'll go to the post office and ship it to you. For, you, for large organizations, it's much more difficult than that. Okay, marketing. So, um, it's Amazon. Um, uh, oh. And you know, technology isn't always that efficient as we hope it will be. Because why would you need this? I don't know. Um, so, marketing. Someone, someone who hasn't said anything yet. Marketing. Okay. Um, I don't know. Um, um, you two um, over there, we are now talking to each other. <laughs> no, it's not, it's not you in the back seat before on the back row, but you. Yeah, you. What have you uh, thought of mar the marketing? So, what kind of marketing will Amazon do? Yeah, we were talking that um, we have actually never seen a Amazon itself. Yeah, you're right. Well, I, actually, uh, I realized me neither. Um, so, <laughs> so there are no television commercials for Amazon. Yeah, yeah. So Amazon does not. So so marketing is not only, uh, of course, newspaper advertisements or uh, television commercials, but there are a lot of different types of marketing, um, and of trying to sell your products. So Amazon um, is on other websites advertising products you can buy. Uh, does Amazon have other tricks to convince you to buy certain products? Have you ordered something on Amazon, for example? No? Who has? What well, about uh, you? Yeah, I have ordered, but just because I knew about Amazon, uh, usually I see adver advertisements yeah, on the, in my Facebook page. Hmm. Yeah. Right? Or there's like a sponsored advertisement that says like this page and Amazon, yeah, order something from Amazon and get like 3% off or yeah. something like that. Or maybe a spam email. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Absolutely. So that's one strategy. I think Amazon has also, as other companies, agreements with Google to uh, have specific advertisements focused on your interest. Yeah. So that, like, it's not that uh, everybody gets the same advertisement 
on the on your browser as it would be on TV. Yeah, you're absolutely you're right. So person, it's it's, an, it's personalized advertisement. So so you have two ways of personalizing. So you can personalize it from from where you see the advertisement. So Amazon knows on what website you are and can say, based on that, it can give you recommendations of things you can buy. But you said on your Facebook page. Yeah. So the recommend what what kind of recommendation or maybe maybe Fifty Shades of Grey and you don't, and you don't want to say it, but do you know what kind of recommendations you receive? It wasn't for a specific product. It was just for Amazon, like order for during this week. If you order during this week, you will get a something percent off. Okay, yeah, that's fun to, uh, to see that they also do like more general advertisements. So I don't know if you have noticed if you Facebook and if you look at the advertisements on Facebook. Uh, have you noticed that they, they that they are kind of similar to your interests? Probably, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, a fun thing: try googling something. So try googling um, two unrelated items, and then go to Google the next time and see what kind of suggestions you get. So, for example, if I Google vacation, and then I need to find something about um, Spain, then the next thing I will search for will give me advertisements about vacations in Spain. Um, and Amazon also does that. So I order regularly for Amazon, so my Amazon gives me recommendations about things that I might like. Um, so if you look at the marketing of Amazon, so, so they, their target groups is basically what you said, their target group is everyone individually. So sometimes more general, but basically Amazon gives you personalized recommendations. <coughs> there is also another thing, maybe some company can go, like I've seen one the documentary about the warehouse of Amazon works with Robo and the drones delivering things. That's also in some way marketing because it's about the imagining of the company. Yeah. And if it's not an advertisement. Yeah, you're absolutely right. That's some, that's that's. Um, I I don't want to get too much into uh, into marketing because we have a lot of courses about about marketing and corporate communication. But one fun thing you observe, so one very important aspect of marketing is corporate communication. So you see that many organizations do things like corporate uh, uh, governance or uh, corporate sustainability, in which they in which they. Um, I explicitly state what kind of new things or things they do for the environment or for the poor people in Africa. And that's also part, uh, of course, of a wider marketing strategy. So, thanks. Um, how, would, how would Amazon know if their advertisements work? The more people buy stuff from Amazon and the more people click in their webpage, uh, the, the better the advertisement has worked, I think. So, in, so, so based on an um, online ad, or, um, so what would be the difference between a television commercial and an online ad? So, with television, you want to see if people came because they want, they are searching for Amazon, and uh, when it's um, with a digital advertisement. They can also see your footprints, and they can see if you clicked on the advertisements, and that's the way how you can do the website. Yeah. So Amazon exactly knows who clicked on which advertisements and which uh, products and which type of advertisements are the most successful. So you even have companies that um, that experiment continuously with um, different types of Facebook advertisements. So they make. Um, for a company who says, well, advertise for us, they make like 20,000 different advertisements. Um, so what if we make this heading blue? What if we make it red? What if we put a picture on it? What if we put that picture on it, etc.? So they make a lot of different advertisements, and then they just see how many clicks each advertisement gets, and that way they can, like, it, it gives them kind of an evolutionary approach. So if one doesn't work, they try something else, doesn't work, if it works better, then they continue that, in that path. If it works worse, then it's discontinued. And that gives them the best um, click-through rate. 
So imagine what that does for the internal organization. So you need to keep track of everything. So you need to keep track of which advertisements you post where, which, uh, who actually clicked on that advertisement, um, which product works best with what advertisement. So it's a huge database containing billions of clicks, billions of millions of users, um, maybe billions of products, which are all which all need to be interconnected. So it's very easy for me to say that Amazon can give you personalized recommendations, but it's very difficult to actually implement that in an organization. I, I haven't really got track of time, so um, um, it's about break time, but we won't, sorry. Um, so let's finish this and then have a break. I'm sorry for the disappointment. <laughs> um, this is a bit of a better way to, uh, to structure the, the lecture. Um, and it's fun, isn't it? <laughs> there goes my uh, teaching qualification. <laughs> um, okay, well, a bit more quickly then. What would Amazon look like? What would be the internal structure of Amazon? What kind of departments would they have? You. And you raised your hands? Oh, oh, <laughs> you probably didn't stop that. Uh, yeah, the third. So what what do you how do you think Amazon is structured? What kind of departments? Uh, I don't really know, but I think there is a sort of kind of uh, storage with bigger guys who yeah. uh, who makes the order. Mm -hmm. Well, if, if you think of any organization, what kind of departments do an organization? How is an organization generally structured? Like the finance are going to. Yeah, finance. So it's okay if you don't know. So that's why, that's why we have this course, of course. Sales, shipping. Finance, sales, shipping. Someone has to sort the items also. Yeah, sort. So. Um, IT, IT department. Warehouse. IT department. Thanks. Yes. Um, so if you think of Amazon, say, so they need to have like a general direction, they need to have a department which actually pays people, they need to have a department which takes care of all the sales, they need to have people actually doing the work, like uh, picking the orders, etc. Um, delivering the orders, they, they probably won't do that. So they probably have outsourced that to uh, DHL or uh, um, another uh, FedEx or something else. So an organization has a sort of consistent structure, which basically um, takes care of the whole organization, which also needs to communicate. So you have a finance department and you have a warehouse, but the finance department needs to know from the warehouse which products are sold, so that they can build people. And so they, the management needs to have that information in order to make the management reports and know how much they sold, and if their organization is doing well. So they, all these departments need to be interconnected. So, okay, we already talked a lot about the different IT systems that Amazon has, so let's skip that so you can finally be in a break. Um, the sad news is that we will continue at quarter to uh, 12 anyways, so it's a bit of a bit shorter break than usual. So, see you in 10 minutes. <laughs> Thank you.